and welcome to the People Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of October 17th, 2020. Well, let's start off with Mnuchin and Pelosi are still talking about the finer details of the stimulus package, such as basically the testing and tracing information as far as the stimulus package goes. Apparently, there's a few discrepancies in the language, as it's called, um, of uh, how it's written up. And Pelosi and Mnuchin are trying to correct this language to make it so it is more feasible for the American people. And while they're doing this, people are still dying. People are still starving. People are still going homeless. Well, they live in their nice, posh little mansions, eating their caviar and not worrying about a thing. I don't know about you, but I want politicians that will work faster than what's currently going, what their, what their current speed is, because it's going very slow, because as we know, McConnell is doing basically nothing except for sitting in the Senate barking orders. And Nancy Pelosi and Mnuchin are talking to each other about stimulus over the phone. They have not yet met in person, but that's another topic. <sighs> And Mnuchin is basically traveling to the Middle East today. He won't be back until the 20th of this month, which is Tuesday. He went there to talk about the support, the support of the extended economic pact they have. So basically, I'm guessing we're going there to talk to them about dealing with money matters. But if you're thinking about uh, what about our stimulus checks and our stimulus packages, don't worry about that because Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin have yet to meet in person to talk about the stimulus packages. They've been doing everything over the phone. And that includes today. They have had a phone call about the stimulus over the phone today. The information on that phone call has yet to be released. But when it does, I will be sure to inform you guys of what was said if it is relevant to keeping us Americans alive during this pandemic. Let's see here. Larry Kudlow was on Stuart Varney yesterday, being irrelevant as usual. And in fact, I actually have a clip of him being quite irrelevant as usual. So please indulge me with this little clip, and I'll be right back. Thank you. But let me press you again. What growth rate do you expect in the fourth quarter? Well, I think preliminarily, looking at these early numbers for October, uh, retail sales was for September, I get that. But other trends, I mean, he, here's what, one of my favorite indicators that used to be obscure, but it's not anymore. New business applications oh. are soaring so at that. record pace. Yeah, there so was it. a story in the Wall Street Journal yeah. about it, and I saw something else today. Uh, one of the uh, smart Wall Street people are talking about it. And it's an odd thing because uh, the, 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 the talk is that a lot of folks who became unemployed, all right, most regrettably, but they're sticking with it and they're going out and starting new businesses. They're going to be small businesses. But that's the great part of American capitalism. Gales of creative destruction. I just love that new business startup story. And the funny thing is, is what creative spin on the unemployment record that he put in there? I mean, as you notice, he called the unemployment uh, gales of creative destruction. So is that true? Is our unemployment record a gale of creative destruction? Because I don't think it is. Unemployment record needs to be fixed. And as you notice, our president has done nothing to do that. He's been hiding in the White House, infecting his staff, because we all know he still has COVID-19 even though they've released probably false information saying that he's been testing negative quite rapidly. Even though we know his wife and his son both have COVID-19. So that means he has it too. Um, Cutload is basically way out of touch with the people and the, and the information. I'm sure as you noticed, Cutload also said that with only two weeks before the election, that he would have a it's going to be a very hard time for him to, him to believe that a big stimulus package is actually going to pass through the House and the Senate with only 17 days left before the election. And on the election, I would 
like my viewers' comments on that. I mean, are you going to be voting for our current president in office, Donald Trump, which has screwed our economy over very badly? Or are you going to try to vote for Biden, who promises to give more stimulus to the people to keep our economy alive, to keep it afloat, to keep us alive? I mean, I like I like Biden and uh, Harris's options on the, the whole stimulus thing about giving out more stimulus and, and how they plan to get that paid back by increasing the taxes on those who make $400,000 a year or more, as well as increasing taxes on the capital gains, which would be the stocks. I covered that in an episode actually, I think it was like last month when I was talking, when I was talking about Biden and Harris. And let's see here. He did say that the $300 billion left over from the CARES Act should be used for to go for unemployment, pay tech protection, and airline bailout, or relief as he called it. And using this money is a good idea. I'm doing it wrong. It's, it's a good idea. But if you remember correctly, on September 4th, President Donald Trump said that he was planning to use this $300 billion to send out the people a second stimulus check, which has yet to happen yet. I wonder why that is. I mean, so far they, they talked about how there's supposed to be $156 billion left over that they're going to be using for, from the old Paid Tech Protection Act to use to do a second round of PPP money. Donald Trump says he found $300 billion in the old CARES Act that he's going to use to give a second round of stimulus checks to the people. And he said that basically, well, I don't need the Congress's approval to send this money out to the people, but he wants the Congress's approval. And yet we haven't heard anything else past that point. And then recently he's been tying the, um, he's been tying the, um, what is it? Mitch McConnell, not Mitch McConnell, sorry, wrong one, uh, Stephen Mnuchin to go bigger on the stimulus package because he wants to spend more than $1.8 trillion dollars. And yet, he also wants to spend less than $2.2 trillion, which is Nancy Pelosi's bottom line offer. He says that the, if, he, if you guys go big, that he will rally the Republicans in the Senate to back him on this, this stimulus package. But now it's all in Nancy Pelosi's ballpark. Well, let's see if Nancy Pelosi will actually get off her butt and realize that every minute that she slacks is every minute a person dies in the United States. Because... All these deaths got a toll up on all the Senate, all the House of Representatives, as well as all the Trump administration, including the president himself, because every death is blood on their hands for not doing something faster. And as we've noticed, every other country has taken care of their citizens better than our country has taken care of us. They've given us a one-time stimulus check to bridge us over for God knows how many months now. They gave $600 a week for unemployment for everyone that was on unemployment, not realizing that not everyone will qualify for unemployment. So those people that didn't qualify for unemployment basically got nothing. And then also their, uh, what was it, renter moratorium as well as went for mortgage as well, expired. And they haven't done nothing about that yet. They think, I think they have like a temporary one in place because the CDC said something about um, they don't want the spread of COVID to get worse, so they did something about it. And I think that's about to expire in December as well. And all the Senate seems to be worried about is the um, Supreme Court nominee, Amy Barrett, and making sure that she gets into office. And the only reason why they want to do that is because they want to get rid of the Affordable Cares Act by put in place by Obama. And I don't blame them because the Affordable Cares Act is basically a useless bill because it does nothing but forces people to get health insurance even if they can't afford it. But talking about Amy Barrett, um, the hearings for this for Amy Barrett basically was from what I've heard and seen was a very big snooze. The these hearings didn't rally up didn't really rally up the base now there's uh, trump was actually hoping that these would rally up all the republicans to be behind their his his nominee and well he might have another thing coming on that idea because i'm not sure if they were really too impressed of the hearings because from 
was come across my ears and my eyes is that these hearings were actually boring and the snooze fest basically and as far as McConnell goes McConnell still wants to put a skinny bill through and see if it'll pass the skinny bill will be 500 billion dollars and that'd cover for paytech protection um a little bit of unemployment and i think what well, i think the airlines are the, th the three main things he wants to pass through and we all know that a skinny bill will not get passed by the house representatives because nancy Pelosi can say that is too small and she does not want to do piecemeal as it's called as far as standalone stimulus bills well nancy Pelosi needs to get off her butt and start doing a standalone stimulus bill to send out all the american people a rapid $1,200 or more stimulus check to help out the people because we are out here we're starving we're suffering and we're going homeless and they're doing nothing except for squabbling over finer details and how certain words are put inside the stimulus package and as well as on the stimulus I, uh, I've heard that if Donald Trump says that if he loses the election that he will leave the country the only problem I see with that is he was at one time, if he loses the election, he would have been the president of the United States, which means if he leaves the country, he would be a basically a threat to national security. And he might try to sell out our secrets to the Russians, which are his friends. And I don't know if that's really going to work that well with the United States letting their president live out of the country, knowing that he's a threat risk to the country. But we'll see what happens because i hope he loses anyways and i think the only place that he should go isn't out of the country it's more like in a maximum security prison where he'll spend the rest of his natural life for committing massive counts of murder as well as lying to the population and stealing from them as well but these are my opinions but until next time you guys have a magnificent saturday and remember stay safe and we're on this together I'm going to broadcast again to you guys tomorrow or Monday, whichever comes first. Well, of course, we know tomorrow's going to come first, but whenever I get more relevant information to pass on to my viewers and my subscribers. So until then, you guys have an excellent evening. Bye. <laughs>